Good evening, HBT family and everyone else that's uh, going on tonight to watch us live in our Bible study here tonight. Um, hopefully you had a, a good week. Um, hopefully you had a, a great Resurrection Sunday with your family, um, whether it's just your home but with your kids there or just you and your spouse. That's great. Um, man, we had some great weather these past few days, haven't we? Um, Monday was great, a little windy, but man, the sun was out, a beautiful day. God is good. God is good all the time. And and uh, as of right now, I can't see everybody who's watching because I have my phones and, and the cameras, the other cameras for YouTube um, facing the direction where I can't see who's all signing on. But I'm hoping you're here. And I'm trying to give everybody a little chance to, to sign on here tonight in our Bible study. Um, just want to continue to be praying for y'all. Um, as y'all been praying for us, you know, uh, think hopefully things will get back to normal here in a couple of weeks. Who knows uh, what's going to happen? Every day it changes. As we see, as you can see, I'm here in my front yard. That's how big my front yard is back here in the back behind me. Uh, but God is good. It's a beautiful day, and today's study is the title. And I really don't have like a. I mean, I had several names for tonight's study but you know man I, I hope you're you're signing on tonight and you're watching live really it's it's for us it's for us to help us to get back on track and, and for anybody else that's part of another church or or that's thinking it in church man you know the Bible clearly tells us you know that that we need to step up and lead the church and for you wives and, and moms and, and young ladies, uh, I pray that tonight you um, can be praying for all the men. You know, um, men are needed in the church in every area, uh, in, in deaconship and helping the pastor visits and, and, and you know, in the roles of the, the young people and teaching them. And because a lot of our young people don't have dads now, and, and it's, it's a vital peace in our society that is missing and um, you know a lot of a lot of young boys don't know how to use a hammer uh, Phillips screwdriver anything of that nature it's um, you know it's it's rough for some of these young kids um, but you know what let's go ahead and get started tonight and, and we're gonna pray uh, it's a beautiful evening out here you know partly cloudy just a little bit scatter clouds and let's pray and let's thank God and, and his goodness and and um, I'll kind of give you the title where I settled on here uh, tonight so let's pray father we just uh, we come before you uh, this evening father from uh, our homes uh, from our home to their home Lord from their home to ours father we lift up every uh, believer uh, Lord, whether it's from our church or from other churches, Father, we just pray that you allow them to be blessed uh, tonight as they're streaming live uh, in their studies and their time of, of still trying to get together and still trying to be committed to growing in the Word of God. Father, I pray that they had a great day today, that they were blessed. Lord, we pray for their families. We pray for their immediate family around them, Lord, and we just pray that you continue blessing them, Lord, during this time, that they continue to reflect on how good you still are to them, Lord. And we pray a, a hedge of protection over them, Lord, that, that during this time, Lord, that they can stay indoors, stay protected, Lord, from this virus. And um, follow that we pray also, Lord, that, that uh, uh, here soon that we're able to get back together and, and, and fellowship. And follow, we also pray for the ones that maybe don't have Internet or are finding other ways to to get fed and father we, we pray for them lord we pray that that they're able to get maybe to a next door neighbor or something of that nature and, and able to tune in uh somehow uh, but father tonight uh, we pray that you bless this word and uh lord i just pray that you're able to um use us as as effective tools uh instruments uh vessels uh, lord it, in the places that you have us planted at the places that you called allowed us to call home uh, a body of believers and so we thank you for the privilege you've given us tonight to be together uh, in your son's name we pray amen 
um, the title of the message or the, the Bible study, and please forgive me, we're going to try to keep this not too long. We're going to try to keep it probably within 35 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, just the fact that it's a lot easier to load up on YouTube and, and get it uploaded a lot quicker. Uh, for other people that are watching it on YouTube that don't have Facebook things of that nature so um, hopefully y'all can bear with us in that in that decision as well so the, the title is just simple it's just simple I mean I had different names and it just step up you know no I'm not talking about that movie step up with with the dancing and all that type of stuff you know it is for us as men you know I know in society, we've always had this trend, and you've heard me say this, church, for the ones that hear me on Sunday mornings preach from the pulpit, that a that a happy wife is a happy life. And, and you know, I've told y'all that that's gotten so backwards to what Scripture is. And, and yes, the Bible says to lay down our lives for our wives and and love them as we love ourselves and and do great things for them and i'm a hundred percent in agreement of that but god did not call the women to be leaders in the home he called us as men to be the leaders in our home and so i i challenge every man here uh tonight in the study uh to step up and uh to get into the word uh, don't be afraid to, to carry this to your job, you know, the Word of God. And don't be afraid to open it up during lunchtime. And uh, if you have that chance, um, you know, and read it and, and, and grow it and, and find ways to, to, to plug your children in, to plug maybe your young adult if you have those or you have teenagers. And find a way to say, Lord, how can I bless my family through the knowledge and wisdom that you're giving me by studying your Word? And the, the passage that comes to me is going to be in, it's going to be in 1 Peter chapter 5. So I'll give you a, a, a few seconds there to turn there. 1 Peter chapter 5. And remember, Peter is writing to the church. He's basically writing to the elders of the church. And he's writing in different sections here uh, to help them understand that now it is your job to step it up. Um, and so in 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to read just verses 1 through 11 here uh, tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and read that. And it says, and I'm reading at the NLT. Uh, for some of y'all that might be hearing it in a uh, different wording. So that's the version that I, I read out of. And so it says, and now a word to you who are elders in the church. I too am an elder and a witness to the suffering of Christ. And I, too, will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow, fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you are young, excuse me, excuse me, the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all you do, dress yourself in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls uh, around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. 
you might say, Pastor, I don't think it's for men. I know it is really for men. You know, even though you might not think that because it's not really it's not a really directive. It's more for pastors. It's more for the shepherds. You know, Peter writes to the elders and, and he's writing to the elders of the church. And the fact that you might say, well, what's an elder of a church? It's pretty much a leader in a church is someone that that has been. How can I say it graciously? I don't want to use this word, but I'm going to use it. Uh, an age in the church a little bit. He, he seasoned, uh, if I could use that word here tonight, uh, in the church. And, and he's grown in wisdom. And his experience really is what we're going to be looking at here tonight. It's something that we got to learn as men to be expressing uh, our, 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 our experiences. And too many men in our churches today, not just, uh, I'm not talking just to our church, I'm talking to churches across the state, uh, across the nation. Too many men uh, in a lot of churches, and I'm not saying all churches, but in a lot of churches, uh, are too silent. Uh, it's more woman led, it's more uh, actively involved with women, and, and and you know they're more thriving in ministry and willing to serve and stepping up and doing this and doing that and and men are in those churches are more plugged into sitting down on the sofa watching a football game for their favorite team or the basketball and they rather buy tickets to go sit in the arena and be entertained that way we as men are far too easily to be entertained um you know, if we were to ask to, to host a Bible study and and in some churches, in our church, whoever it may be, um, men will come in, you know, just kind of just sprinkled in. And, and so Peter sees this, and so he's trying to encourage the elders of the church that, listen, elders, you're going to have to start sharing your experiences with the younger men. You're going to have to get these younger men involved you're going to have to plug them in, get them drawn to you. And so Peter writes it this way. He says, he writes the word to the elders of the church. And he says, the witness of suffering of Christ, he goes on. Then, and he shares in verse 1, revealed to the whole world as, as fellow elders, I appeal to you. Then in verse 2, where I know it sounds like he's writing to uh, the pastor. And yes, we could take it to the pastor or to the shepherd of the church. But he's writing to the body of elders, which is a group of men in back then involved that were leading. Because remember, you go back to the book of Acts. It was the 12 disciples, well, the 11 disciples, the apostles. Okay. And then when the church grew drastically, what did they do if you look in Scripture? Anybody might answer that. You might answer that at home right now. I can't see that. But we see that they assigned seven other men. They didn't assign women. They assigned seven other men to do the hands-on. So they went from their eldership, from their experience, they blessed and chose seven other men to step up. And then from there, as they grow, those men will be able to use their experience and continue to share that what they've done and continue to allow them to grow and mature younger men. That is the model that the church has always been given. That model has been there from day one since the church started growing. Is you pull someone in, disciple them, and grow. But in our churches today, men has failed. We've you could go back to Adam and Eve, and you can see where Eve was easily deceived, and and we as men today uh, easily give in to our wives. And I'm not trying to. To cause a fight here or, or have a dispute tonight when you get home with your spouse or you're there with her right now. But what I'm getting at is that men, not so much that you yield to your wife's advice every day, but as you're taking it in as a consideration and helping you because she's your helpmate. The word says she's your helpmate. And so you have to, to have her join in and see areas that, that you might not see. You might not deal with emotionally or don't know how to deal with that. And so, yes, it's great to have your your helpmate by your side to make those decisions, but also, me, men, it is you that needs to lead. Not only did you lead your home, but you're required to be a leading in the church. In the body of believers, you need to stand out. You need to be stepping up 
and you need to be knowing your word, the word, and you need to be giving it and discipling younger men. There's just simply no excuse, no other way. Because look what he says in verse two. He says, "I he's care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God." And and I find that promising and and. And we should do it gladly, as Scripture says. But when you, when you look at here, when he says, eagerly to serve God, men, we need to find a way. I, I, I know I said this in the past, maybe a year ago, maybe a couple years ago on the pulpit, uh, that, 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 that our, our churches has become so, so, um, how can I put it, um, feminine, maybe is the word I would use. And the the um, the manhood, the, the brotherhood of the church has kind of left, and 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 there's no one's fault. It, it, well, I, I shouldn't say that. Let me backtrack. It's it, it's not. We can't point the finger. We can't blame anybody. Uh, but we could see the trend of how our society, the the devil. And we're going to look at the here in scripture in just a second how the devil has distracted us and Peter just warned us that to be on guard men don't let the, the devil to devour you and he devours us with our jobs and and entertainment and, and other things that, that that we're passionate to do and we take off and do it no questions asked um, we we tend to um, how can I put it we, we soften our wife a little bit with with the expenses of the money that we spend on on our little activities that we like to do from from hunting to playing cards to I mean fishing trips to to investing in our vehicles I mean there's all kinds of things that we as men get just pulled away and the devil has learned to use all those little toys to keep us from the Word of God and Peter just told us what our job is to do. He says what in verse 2? He says, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. So in other words, God has brought you to the church that you are planted right now. And he says, this is the flock. You are in charge to protect them. See, it's not the women's job. It's not the women's job to, to get out there and, and fight for their kids and do that. No, it's your job, men. You need to be standing in the front lines because you're the one who's called to prepare for the flock. And he goes on and he says, God has to trust you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. Man, we got to do this again. Man, I got to serve at the table. I got to be the, the uh, usher at the back door. Or, or man, I got to pick up the offering today. What? No. Man, we need to be willingly to serve. And you wonder why a lot of kids today don't go to church. And I hear this so much. I've heard this through the years, and I will say it tonight. Oh, well, they didn't like what the pastor said. It, it hurt their feelings. It's this. It's that. It, it's this person, you know, grudgingly looked over here and told them something. No. Men, it is your fault because you have not prepped up or train your children in the ways of the Lord. It's simple. Because we're supposed to be doing what he called the elders to do in the church. And I think to me, you might say, well, Pastor, I'm not an elder of the church. I've, I've only been in the church for, for uh, let's just say, five years. Well, I, I, I'm going to say something here. At five years, you might have maybe grown from here to way up here, but you've experienced the ins and outs of what God has done in your life. Maybe your your faith has been doubt uh, been tested, and you've doubted, and and you you strayed away a little bit, then you came back, and and so it's been up and down. But God wants you to use that to teach these other men not to make those mistakes, not to not to uh, just trample over things but to look at it and to observe it and to be wise in our decision making and he goes on and he says there and it, we're not doing this to see what we can get out of it. it's not a personal gain and it's not a a country club where we're or anything of that nature we're working up levels 
to, to get recognized. It, it, we, the scripture just said in verse 2 that we do it because we want to serve a living God. We're eager to serve Him. And of course, he says in verse 13, in verse 3, excuse me, he goes, don't lord over the people that assigned to your care. He says, but lead them by your own good example. Maybe, man, that's what's maybe that's what we're struggling with. Maybe we're doing things behind uh, our family's back. Maybe we're participating in things and, and maybe we, we cover up things and maybe we say things and maybe we've looked at things that we shouldn't be looking at behind our family's back. And you feel like I'm not, and so you stay quiet, and the devil loves to use that and just keeps you there and just, just stay right there. Let the wife do everything. And then before you know it, you lost the opportunity to minister to your family. You've lost an opportunity to be a great influence in the body of, of the church. And so we have to step up. He says, lead them by your good example. I find that good. In other words, in our jobs, men, we need to learn to stay committed to our job. Don't hop around. I've heard from so many different companies today where they can't find young people don't want to work. A lot of young people don't work. And I have, it has to do with the men. The men has not taught. We have not been consistent and learned to teach them that we have to support the families. We have to learn to work. If they get married, they got to be learning to support it. They got to learn to support their responsibility. If they get married and, and they have kids, they have to step it up. And we as men need to teach that. That's why he says, lead by your good example. Be committed coming to church, men. Don't say, well, you do pastor, you understand, I work late, I have this, I'm tired, my ankle hurts, my this here. Listen, I'm bivocational, I work two jobs. And they're very high demanding jobs. Okay? So you can't tell me, well, Pastor, you know, uh, this. No, you're going to have to learn. I've done this so much in my past. As stand up, you've heard me, church members. That, nope, I can't do it. I'm going home. Sometimes I'll get out right at 6 o'clock, but I'm rushing straight to Bible study. Because it was what God put in my heart to do. And I'm praying that God will do the same for you tonight. Help you understand your responsibility. If you want your, how to put it, your family, your sons, if your daughters as well, to have a great marriage, to succeed in marriage, because there's so many people getting divorced left and right, 50%. Over now, I think it's 52 or 53%. Men, it falls on your shoulder. If you're not leading at home, you're not teaching, then it's going to fail. And you wonder why a lot of young men do not want to commit to marriage. Because they weren't taught that responsibility. It was dropped at home. It was failed. Uh, it, it, it just, just was, it was not important. It was other things that were important. And it happens and you wonder why our society is molded the way it is today and he goes on and this is what he says and and of course he says in verse 4 of the great shepherd appears you will receive your crown of never ending glory that's great in other words you're going to get your reward for what you do i know sometimes we as men want to get a pat in the back everyone does that everyone wants to receive that or get noticed but we need to be noticed by jesus christ then he says in the next verse there in verse 5, In the same way, you are uh, the same way you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. Can you imagine how our our society, our community would be different? How police officers would be more respected if we were to teach that in the homes as well as teach that in the church with a lot of young people who would come in without dad figures without moms maybe, things of that nature. We would have less pain, less um, discipline going on if we as men and as dads would step up in the home. Yes, we have to work hours, but you know you know what I take on that? That we shouldn't live above our means, and I'm not going to get into those details. He says, expect the elders... And all in all you do, 
dress yourself in humility as you relate to one another. So in other words, as we're listening, men, and here's something too that I, I know that we all do this, men, we uh, we tend to, whether you go fishing, how they do those fishing tricks on, on Facebook and everything, they'll get the picture or the, or the fish and they'll put it real close up, you know, make give that right angle, make that fish look like bigger, you know, than what it really is. Uh, men, we have to be careful. I know sometimes we all get we all get caught up in that, where we tend to to brag a little bit more. We've done a little bit more than what the other man does, and sometimes that gentleman, that father, might just raise his standards down a little bit more because he feels like he didn't meet what you've done, and he feels like I'm behind. And I know we all we all do that at times, men. We're guilty of that when we stand around and. And talk to each other and we share stories and campfire stories, whatever it may be. And so we have to learn to, to humble ourselves with humility and learn to relate. Learn to be open minded and be ready. And I know, uh, um, you know, I fell too as a pastor at times, you know, and oh, man, I should have prayed for them. Oh, they just shared this. You know, I should have prayed, and I, you know, but sometimes my mind is thinking of other things or some of the things taking place and. And we drop the ball. And it happens. And I'm not saying you got to walk around and be the perfect superman. That ain't going to happen. But we strive to, to, to live and, and, and relate to one another. And then, of course, because he says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And then he goes on. He says, humble yourself under the mighty power of God. And the right time, he will lift you up in honor. If you serve God, just for instance, when we go to the church, when we clean, I mean, we're cleaning commodes. I'm putting commodes together, uh, you know, doing whatever we got to do. Sweeping the floors, mopping. Or y'all church, I mean, you see what we do this as men. We're humbling ourselves. It doesn't matter. We're learning to serve. And here's where Peter is giving the elders, you as a man in the church, you as an elder in the church. Many of you have been there for a few years. Or any other church, you've been there for a while maybe. I hope you have and plugged yourself in. Look what he says here. He warns us. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He says, stand guard. Don't sit here and, and you know, what our younger generations do. They, they sit like this. You know, oh yeah, it's good, it's good. And we love to sit like this and you know in our recliners and our chairs and, and we got our, our, our shoes off and we got a, a hole in our sock and we're so comfortable. We got our feet all up in the air and everything, and we're too relaxed and we're not on guard. Men, we gotta step it up in church. We can't sit like that and be relaxed and say, Well, I need to get fed. It's me, it's me, it's me. When is it gonna change? When is that gonna turn around? And when are you gonna step up and start serving and start being alert and start fe the, uh, defeating, excuse me, the devil off? Because too many people around you, around your neighborhood, are losing the battle. They're losing. Their families are getting torn apart their relationships, their marriages. And too many kids are walking the streets. What are we doing as men to offer that? You know, I know at our church, I mean, we have a basketball slab and everything else. We got volleyball courts, we got a baseball field. And I pray that we can get back to, to using that as a ministry tool to bring people in. But men, it don't take just one man doing it. It takes all of us getting together. You say, Pastor, I have a demanding job. I understand that. We all have demanding jobs. We're all tired. There has to be a point where you're going to have to say to yourself, that has to stop. There has to be a breaking point. There has to be a point where I got to invest more into to not only my son or my daughters, but other kids that they are around. Because let me tell you something. It's not so much that you're influencing your son and your daughter, but it's the people around them that they get influ influenced by. And from their influence, they do things without you even knowing. And then you wonder, well, where do they learn this? Why are they doing this? And this and that. Well, because we as men did not stand up, be on guard, be alert, and ready to beat that devil out of our surrounding areas. 
in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our churches today. He goes on, and, and here's where he, he's telling the elders, I know i got to wrap it up here in about seven, eight minutes, so I apologize, church. But he says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. How can you stand firm, men? Is by getting into the word of God. And he says, what does he say to stand firm? Excuse me, against him and be strong in your faith. The only way you're going to be strong in your faith is reading the word. And as, as, as the book of Hebrews says, iron sharpening iron. We're there rubbing shoulders with each other. We're in the field. We're in it together. We're standing together. And we're not letting a single enemy come into our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and in our churches. Man, it's you. You go back to Nehemiah, who were building the walls, who were standing guard? The men were. The men were doing it back in Nehemiah. Who was fighting with David? The men. In the book of Judges, in the book of jo Joshua, who was standing up? Men. Who did God call to be prophets? Men. Who did God call to be the apostles and the disciples? Men. Men, you have a vital role. So stand, he says, firm against the devil. Have strong and be strong in your faith. And remember that your family of believers, we're all in this together. There's not one that does it by himself. And Ben, trust me, my phone has always been open. No matter what time of the day it is. Yes, I might sometimes I might have things going on, but I will do my best. To be there for you. And look what he says. Remember that your family of believers. All over this world. Is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Hmm. I want you to think about that for a minute. That really hit me earlier today. When I was reading and studying this morning. Before I had to do some of my other work. That I had to get done. What this world is going through. Almost every part of the world, I forgot how many countries are affected, 100 and something countries that are affected with this, this COVID-19. They're going through the same suffering. Maybe some men, may, you might have lost your job. Men, we're here for you. If, if, that, if you're going through that, reach out to one of us. Reach out to me. Let me know these things. I don't hear them. Let me know. And we'll do what we can to help you. There's people going through all this, throughout all the states that we have that are being affected, that our men are going through the same thing. They're wondering, is their family going to get affected? Are they concerned about their little ones? Are they concerned about their spouse? Yeah. Are they concerned about their finances? Yes. They're going through the same thing you're going through. And can you imagine in third world countries where I shared with you before where, you know, Nicaragua, you know, Haiti, they don't even have refrigerators, a lot of them. Can you imagine how maybe tougher it is for them to get the food? You know, we find it very inconvenient for us to uh, to get in line and wait. And then when we get into to the store, not everything's there that we want. And there's no paper paper materials that we need to buy for a home. And then we got to drive somewhere else and... And we can't because we got to go to work and things of that nature. And we find it's very inconvenient. Men, there's other people still going through that, maybe far worse than you. And and I have to really, if, if I could say this expression on, on, on live stream, is slap myself, you know, silly and say, wake up, Roy. You know, there's people in all these countries are being affected that are, are far less income wise than I am and material wise and all this and here we are having maybe a little pity party because you know of the inconvenience or we let our emotions get the best of us then he says in verse 10 he says in his kindness god called you to share in his eternal glory of the means of jesus of christ jesus so that after you have suffered a little while he will restore you support and strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation men you need to trust trust excuse me jesus christ you need to get plugged in you need to step up and you need to start serving 
Start learning to put your priorities straight. Your job is not your priority. Yes, it pays the bills, but God gives you the strength. God gives you the will to stamp up. God gives you the talent. God gives you your family, which he could take away so easily like he did Job. So men, don't take things for granted. You might sound like I'm getting on you, but men, we need a slap in our face. Because look what he says there. You have suffered, yes, for a little while. But, but excuse me, but Peter says he will restore you. He will strengthen you. He will support you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. Aren't you tired, men, of losing this battle? Are you tired of sitting there doing the same thing and over just dealing with something, same thing, or, or thinking something like, I want to get out of that. Start rebuking the devil out of your life and start standing up, get into the word, get plugged in, and step up. When you step up, you are able to get on that firm foundation that Jesus Christ wants you on. And he says in the last verse, all power to him forever. Amen. Peter's referring to God that it's all for him. It's all his glory. It's not for us, man. We have to be willing to do this willingly and eagerly. Wives, I know you're listening here, but I pray that you start getting on a 30-day prayer, 45-day prayer, 60-day prayer, 90-day prayer, whatever it's going to take to break your husband and help him understand that the priority is serving Jesus Christ. Men, women, I, I'm asking you to take me seriously here. Don't sit here and play the games because your kids are too valuable. Your son, your daughter, I'm sure you want your daughter to marry a great man. Well, let me be honest with you, in our culture today, it's very slim pickings the way our culture is headed. My question to you could be, like I've shared before, is that person really going to be a man? It could be, you know, other things. The way our culture is shifting. So we need to step up. Women, you need to be in the battlefield as well. But you need to be praying. Not just in the mornings, but the midday. Uh, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever it is. Give you different times of day to be praying for your husband. And say, God, I pray that you convict him. God, I pray that you bring him home. God, I pray that he's able to tell his boss that it's time to put his family first. Because too many families are being broken. Too many families need to be restored. And we men need to carry that flag and say, here we are. We're going to stand together. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. And Father, we ask that you be with, be with us tonight. Father, I pray for, for every man from our church to any other church, for anybody else watching. Father, I pray that, that you equip them. You help them have a desire to step up. Lord, I pray that they have plenty of time during this time to really think about what's going on, what's their priorities. And Father, I pray that you bless them, enrich their lives, give them a desire to serve you willingly, Lord. And let them start getting to your word and start growing. Bring that passion to serve you back in their lives. Just like when they first gave their life to you. And Father, for any man or any, any uh, husband that is struggling with that, that has never done that, Father, I pray right now that you plant someone in their life or that you put my number in their hearts, Lord, to, to, to call, to talk. And Lord, I pray that we're able to minister and continue to build these men. And Father, I pray for the wives, the moms. Lord, I pray that you, that you allow them to be mighty prayer warriors, not a repetitionist prayer warrior, but Father, Lord, that I pray that they start getting into details about their husband, about their man, and Lord, they start digging deep into their lives, Father, Lord, and start pulling out these items that need to be removed. And so, Father, I pray that these women will be mighty warriors just like that. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for your word. In your son's name we pray. Amen. HBT family, live stream family, God bless. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Have a blessed day.